So the competition's over. What now? Okay, competition is done. And here you see me sitting down, chilling with a cup of coffee in my hand, giving a toast to you guys, feeling all is dandy, all is good in this world. I have just won. But hey, post-comp, what happens now? And this is what we're gonna look at today. I think the main thing on most people's minds is what happens after the competition. Now, when a lot of competitors compete, they have that tunnel vision, that focus on that one moment on stage, that brief moment where they're in their peak condition, they look the best, uh, they basically show their physiques, and then they get graded for that, irregardless of whatever result. When the competition is over, what are their goals? Uh, do they still want to continue training in this manner? Do they still want to build up a better physique, perhaps a competition in the future? For some people, a lot of competitors may find that the stage is not the place that they want to be in anymore. Uh, once is probably enough for them. A lot of them have pitted their wills, their determination to test themselves, basically, to see how far they can go. And after the competition, it's, that's it for me. Uh, I will hang up the bikini or my trunks and that's an experience I've had in my life, uh, but probably not an experience I want to go down again. So for some people, that could be the case. For others, something else perhaps. Maybe a different style of training, maybe a different competition. Now I want to talk about myself and what I'm going to be looking forward to after this competition. To also give you guys a brief rundown on show day itself, what happened and what were my thought processes on show day. Uh, but also what did I eat after the competition and what were my actions right after? What, what am I planning basically right now and moving into the future? So welcome, this is show day. We are now backstage uh, and the competition that we're doing is as you can see the ICN, I Compete Natural Show. Uh, and this is part of the season A show. So we're really excited. I'm here, I've got three other competitors in three different lineups. Um, and we're excited to go through our routines. We've been prep, I guess prepping or getting ready for this day. So stay tuned, this will be a rundown of what we're gonna be doing today. Now, first and foremost, Throughout peak week, which is what I spoke about, uh, today what we're gonna be doing is really carving up and getting our bodies ready for just that moment on stage. And one of those things that we do is to basically increase the amount of carbohydrates that we take through the day uh, and ensure that our muscles are full, glycogenated. We will be getting a good pump prior to stepping up on stage uh, in the attempt to get as veiny as vascular and as full as possible for those few moments of stardom and posing. So as you can see here, some of the foods that I have, bananas, I've got some rice cakes, very, very uh, typical of what bodybuilders do. So these are basically puffed rice, it's dried, uh, and uh, honey. I tend to bring some salt as well because you will need salt uh, to help to retain that water in. Uh, some oil, not to tan myself, but basically to increase the intracellular fat stores, triglycerides, so I need any. Uh, and obviously some water, which is extremely important. So we sip water just to make sure you hydrate it to a degree and make sure that they can be absorbed into your cells as well. So we've got a few things on our sleeves uh, and it's sort of a, 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 like a get ready for what is on the show itself. Now, different competitors do different things. Some will come with cakes, muffins, pizzas, um, you know, some come with jams, Nutella, condiments, all that kind of stuff. I prefer to keep my base quite simple because again, I don't want to expose my body to allergenic foods or foods that could bloat me. Having trained so hard for this day, I'd rather not take the risk. If I wanted to eat any sort of sweets, I'll do it after the competition. So this is all still strategy and I'm really excited. Nerves have kind of kicked in. Typically, I'm not nervous about this uh, sort of an, an event. I just go up there and perform and do my best and enjoy what I have, but nerves have just kind of kicked in last minute, so really excited. 
plus with the fact that I've got competitors competing with me as well, uh, it's a big day, it's exciting, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, Ben, you must be pretty thirsty. Have you got a go-to drink post-comp? No, I just have water. I think very, very importantly, if, especially if you're dehydrating during competition, um, get, get an electrolyte ready. Uh, that's extremely important. So, I mean, there are many different ways of manipulating water towards calm. A lot of people drop water, uh, but, you know, some people may increase sodium. So you just got to make sure that you are well hydrated. That's the main thing, but also your mineral content is kept high. So an electrolyte is extremely important. I typically tell my guys to bring a, uh, like a coconut juice, a real coconut water, because I think that's a very natural electrolyte. You can add some sea salt to that if needed, if you're not over salted, but essentially hydrate, super important. Now, the one thing after comp as well is that if you're not well hydrated, you will be extremely hungry. This is exactly why people crave all those sweet foods, those cheap foods right after comp. Uh, and this can typically blow out your physique, right? Because you are so hungry, you are eating senselessly, you don't know what you put into your bodies. So it's very important as well that you are well hydrated post comp. Make sure that you set a limit for how much water you drink post comp. It may be, you know, two liters after the competition, just to make sure that you are sufficiently hydrated. So you can start to think better even when you go to have your cheat meals, or your refeed meals, that you feel better choosing foods that you can enjoy, but don't overeat in the process. There's no use to bloat yourself up for the sake of bloating yourself up. So in show day itself, most of you probably won't know this, but I had a really stressful day prior to show day itself. There were a lot of factors that led up to my stress, one of which was obviously the birthday of my little boy, uh, whose birthday was actually on show day itself. And I think the pressure of having to be there as a parent um, and the focus on everything around you but yourself uh, really detracted from the process of preparation for a comp. Now, typically, if you're preparing for a competition, the day before the comp or even a few days before the comp, you are really starting to I guess save that time specifically for yourself. You will need more rest, you will need more focus on yourself, a lot of posing, uh, and sometimes a lot of self-talk as well, especially if stage is something that you are not familiar with and you might be actually apprehensive of. So I, I think two days leading up to competition is probably the most important days to how your physique will react on comp day itself. And those two days should be the least stressful. Those are the days where you carb up, uh, you increase your calories, you fill out those muscles, you rest more, you sleep more, uh, you get your mind in tune with what you're gonna do on competition day itself. Now, that obviously wasn't the case for me. As most of you know, I literally just came back from a trip in Singapore where I was teaching nine hours a day and I was finishing my, my training for this competition. I came back right into work on the next day and it was, it's was it been full days for me and then the two days leading up to competition, I had to prepare for my little boy's birthday. Uh, and the day prior to competition itself was literally spending the whole day trying to think about what we were doing for him and getting his surprises ready, you know, with, you know, meals and stuff like that. And so it, uh, it was a very stressful time. And the honest truth is it was stressful because the focus was not on me. It was on a different situation, a different event. It was on my, on my little boy. Um, and that was the expectation of being a parent. So the amount of stress that I had not being able to pose, you no know, focus on myself despite my competition being the next day, weighed heavily on my head. Uh, the, the stress carried over into my physique. And I know that I woke up on the Sunday feeling a lot more fluidy in my lower half. That means uh, typically if I rest well and I slept well, uh, I know I would have uh, brought in a much leaner physique. And typically that's the case because cortisol levels are a lot lower. Now when cortisol levels are higher, inflammation is also high and I tend to hold on to a lot more water and that's how my body reacts. So when I got up on the Sunday, what I expected to see within myself, which is vascularity and the lean leanness of my body, the thinness of the skin, wasn't exactly there. I actually woke up a lot more fluidy. You know, it was what it was. It wasn't anything that I could change nor did I want to change because I really wanted the focus to be on my little boy on the day before. Uh, so it was one of those things where, hey, it was what it was. Competition just happened to fall on that particular day. And if I wanted to compete, I had to know what the circumstances were. And I went to competition pretty much saying, it is what it is. Uh, so 
despite the confidence, despite having practice, despite having done what I felt I could for this particular competition, everything boiled down to, you know, the last two days of what could have happened. Plus on show day itself, as you know, I wasn't there prepping just for myself. I had a whole bunch of competitors that I was prepping up uh, for the competition itself for different categories as well. I had to make sure that I attended to them and make sure that their needs were being met. Uh, their protocols were being met. Everyone had a different protocol because their body types are different. Uh, and my prep for each competitor is also, also very specific and different. So I was thankful that two categories that I competed in was actually the first of the categories that was up. So I was able to give myself at least, you know, one to two hours of focus, making sure that I competed first, I did the best that I could, and then the rest of the time actually went to my competitors. So. Uh, if you, you are seeing this, you would probably know that I won both my categories. Uh, I'm very grateful and very thankful for that. Though the honest truth is that I don't feel that I did bring my best physique to stage. I definitely felt that I could have brought a much tighter, leaner, more vascular package to stage, but circumstances did dictate that unfortunately that wasn't the case. And nevertheless, I won my, my categories, uh, which again is, is a blessing. And I was able then to dedicate the rest of my time to helping my competitors compete. Now that day was extremely successful for us, uh, Australian strength performance as a team. Uh, we had the guys there, the trainers were there, and I, I'm very grateful for them for being there to provide support because as you know, bodybuilding is definitely not a one-man show. You definitely need a crew to help you through in a very supportive crew and each of my guys have been such a blessing for that. Uh, so we took home a total of 10 medals. Out of four of us, 10 medals. That was absolutely brilliant and uh, over the moon. There were five goals in those 10 medals, myself taking two of those goals. Another one of my male competitors in his uh, physique categories never competed before, but taking in three goals, smashing his categories. Uh, I had two female competitors also competing in their respective categories, bringing in silvers, uh, bronzes as well as the fourth and fifth place uh, within their categories as well. So it was a very, very successful day. Uh, bear in mind, all these competitors that I had prepped up have never stepped on stage before. So to be able to sweep this competition, uh, we did extremely well. I think the, the question you guys are asking is, so what did I eat after the competition, right? I mean, that in itself tends to be the most exciting part of the competition, and that is the food. And the food really is when most people are looking forward to after the competition, after you know starving themselves and, and keeping to track on their nutrition, the excitement of, okay, what are you gonna eat? You know, what's the next thing are you gonna eat? You're gonna, you have your pancakes, you're gonna have this, you can have that. What is on my plate? Well, for one, one of the things that I said was if I did do extremely well in this competition, uh, which means I, if I placed first or second, which I did, I, I won both my categories, that I would look to compete in the nationals. So I guess my heart and my mind was kind of made up after I won uh, and I did commit myself to that. And so there you go, that's your answer. I did not really have a, a cheat meal or anything much to eat on the day itself. Also given the fact that on the Monday we had a photo shoot, a team photo shoot and a personal photo shoot that I'd organized. And as a result of that, I really didn't have much at all. I just maintained what I needed to maintain. In fact, uh, the diet was, was back on track and I got myself ready for the Monday. But here's the reality of things, and that is I, I was extremely exhausted. So on the day itself, I, I just really felt depleted. Um, I tried to sleep early. I did get up very early on the Monday as well to get ready for the photo shoot. I got to work. Uh, I had clients to train first thing in the morning 
and it was just like a normal day for me. My energy levels were extremely low, extremely depleted, and uh, we had the photo shoot for pretty much half the day. We finished at about two to three in the afternoon. Uh, and I kind of had to call it a day because I really needed some rest. So here I am looking forward to the Nationals coming up in four weeks. I've made my mind to compete in that and my training will continue to push through. I will continue to push loads uh, more and more each week to kind of maintain my muscle mass as much as I possibly can and then sort of taper in the last week to the Nationals as well. The goal is obviously to bring a much tighter package. This time though, I'm gonna be dedicating some days to myself where I can spend it on my own accord to kind of chill, relax, lower my cortisol levels and get everything that I can do, leave no stone unturned for this particular competition. I know the level of competition is gonna be extremely tough and I know who I'm up against really. So all I can do is to bring the best of myself and my version best version of myself to stage and that's what I can ask for. So this is it. This is a wrap from me for this particular competition. Uh, I really hope you have enjoyed my journey and followed me on this journey and also the questions that you guys have answered uh, for competition itself and I look forward to filming more content for you probably if there's anything on my journey to the nationals as well and give you an update and results on that. Uh, but if you enjoyed all that you've seen here, make sure that you put a thumbs up. You like this, I really appreciate you guys for doing so. Uh, and I will see you in my next episode. Take care.